It's TK Friday, and you are watching The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today, I'll be editing An Elephant Family. This will be a full Photoshop edit utilizing the TK8 plugin for Photoshop because, after all, it is TK Friday. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Hey, it's TK Friday. I thank you all for joining me again today. I really appreciate each and every one of you out there. Thanks for watching every TK Friday and also for commenting and liking, sharing, and subscribing. This really helps my channel to grow, so thank you for your support. And I'm up to 30,000 subscribers now, and I couldn't have done it without you. And again, I want to offer you my heartfelt thanks. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, you can click on my affiliate link found in the description below this video. Just click on that link. It'll take you to the TK web store where you can purchase the TK8 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. And if you use my promo code DK15, you'll save 15% off your entire purchase. And when you do that, you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And for that, I truly thank you. Now, don't forget to download this image as well as the PDF notes and try this edit out for yourself. I want to personally thank James May for sending me a bunch of really great animal images. And today's image is one of James May's images. And if you have some images you would like me to edit on a TK Friday, just click on the contact me link in the description below this video. Now you don't really see all the links unless you click on the show more button or the more button. And there you're gonna find a bunch of affiliate links. But if you scroll to the very bottom, you're gonna see a link for contact me. Click on that and contact me. I'd love to edit one of your images on a TK Friday. Okay, let's get started. Here we are in Lightroom. And isn't this a cool image? I did a little bit of a crop on it, as you can see right here. And I used the linear profile. It's a Nikon D6 camera. And then I made some adjustments here. I basically click auto and then just fine tune it a little bit. I want to make sure I'm not clipping highlights or shadows. And I don't want to oversaturate it going in because I like to take my image relatively flat into Photoshop because there I will work on it with the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. And then, of course, I always do like lens corrections, you know, remove chromatic aberrations enable profile corrections, and I did just a slight amount of sharpening on here. No noise reduction. This is a very low ISO image. And next we'll be in Photoshop. And now here we are in Photoshop. Now you'll notice I have a layer called cleanup because there's some, like some of these things like this bush or whatever this is, a little uh, plant. I didn't really like it. I thought it was blocking the elephants here a little bit and your eye was drawn right to this plant. So I did some cleanup at first. I think it's best to clean things up before you start your edit. And if you'll notice here, when I turn this layer on, you can see that's the cleanup. Now I use the uh, new remove tool in Photoshop and that tool was fantastic. I've included this cleanup layer in yours in case you don't want to clean it up, or you can just go ahead and delete this layer and work with this uh, remove tool yourself and clean it up to get some practice with cleanup. If you haven't tried that in a while, if you've never used this remove tool, I highly recommend it. It is really great. Now, you'll notice I have a blank pixel layer here. You definitely want to add a blank pixel layer. And you want to make sure when you're using that remove tool that you have sample all layers checked on. Now, you can remove after each stroke. That's usually what I like to do. And uh, just start to clean up the image. And it really works wonders. So if you haven't tried that out, give it a try. I'll just right click on this image and click on merge down. And now we have that all merged into one layer. Now, I have some good news for you uh, on my before after action. Some folks out there have been having some trouble with it. If the background layer got renamed, it didn't work right. So what I'm going to do is unlock this layer. Whenever you unlock a layer by clicking the lock, it always says layer zero and the before after action doesn't work. But I have good news for you. Tony has fixed the issue with the before after action. It can be named any layer now. So I'm going to also link that in the video's description. You can uh, download this new updated action, which will now work no matter what the layer is named. So that is good news. Give Tony a special thanks for doing that. Tony's such a great guy, and I really appreciate him. Tony told me now, this is very important. Open up your actions and 
find that original before after action and you can just click on it and click the trash can delete it or if you want to hang on to it rename it but this is important you can't have that name tk8 before and after here you have to change it or delete it i recommend deleting it and then all you have to do is after you download the action come up here to the hamburger menu and click on load actions load that action up and you don't have to remove it from your my actions panel because after you load in a new action when you click the before after action it'll work because it's named the same name that's why it's important that you got to get rid of this one or at least rename it so i wanted to point that out because tony said dave don't forget to tell him and so i've told you and as we move through this edit you can see this is called layer zero the action wouldn't work before if it wasn't named background and now it will and you'll see that it does work because i will be using that before after action in this edit if you haven't already done this sit back relax and let's edit this image a trunk full of cuteness image by james may now the first thing we want to do is set ourselves up for success so what i want to do is save out a channel of the elephants and save out a channel of the rest of the image which i'm just calling background now I have my combo and CX panel both opened up. Now the reason I do that is because I'm gonna click on the TK action button. I like to keep this open at all times for my TK actions and I will be working right from this combo panel. But the same buttons on this panel are on the CX panel. The first thing we wanna do is click the select subject button and that'll select out our subject. And now that the subject is selected, we can click this button and we can save that as a channel. I'm just calling mine elephants. And then just click OK. And you can see there it's saved right down in my channels. And now with this button right underneath the Save to Channels button, this is the Invert Selection button. Don't mistake it with this Invert button. This is for pixel layers. This is for selections. So click on this. And now we invert it. And now we can click the same button again to save this out as a channel. I'm just calling mine Background and click on OK. And now we have a background and elephants, and that is setting yourself up for success because we'll be needing this later in the edit. In fact, we'll need it right now. I'm gonna start with the background. If you watch my TK Friday videos, you know I always like to start out with balance and contrast. And on this image, I tried to balance and contrast the entire image. I wasn't getting a good result. That's when I thought, well, I better save out the elephants and the background separately. And when I did, that worked out much better. So a lot of times in an edit, you'll try one way. If that doesn't work, hey, try something else. And that's what I did. Now you'll notice I have the color grading tool here. We don't see the multi-mass panel. So just click this X and we can see the multi-mass panel. The first thing I want to do is click on the My Channels button. And we could choose either Active Selection because you can see by the marching ants I do have an Active Selection, which is the background, or I can click on Background. Either one of these right now will be the same. So let me click on Background, and there is the background. Now we're going to get the Mass Calculator, and this is such a powerful tool in the TK plugin for Photoshop. So click on that. Click on the X to make an intersection. And now you can see here it says background. We can click out of here because we've already selected it. So click the X. And now I'll just click on the luminosity mask button. And I always like to get a midtones three. And all I use that for, it protects the darkest darks and the lightest lights from getting any type of clipping. In other words, losing detail. And we'll click equal to make that calculation. And you can see there it is in the elephants are not part of this selection and now we'll just output that to a color grading tool and we can make some adjustments i'll start by clicking this black circle for shadows and i'll drag this to the left now when you drag this you don't see any change until you release your mouse and now you'll see a change but i took mine over to like a minus 34 right there and now we're going to work on midtones. So click on the gray circle and I'll open up the midtones. I'm going to drag this to the right. And I went over to plus 29 for mine. But that's my vision. Now remember, you have your own vision. You don't have to do everything I do, but I'm just giving you guidelines here and adjust it the way you like to see it. We all have eyes and a brain and we're different. Let that artist that lives inside you out and now let's go for highlights i'll click on the white circle and i'll drag this to the right and i took mine over to a plus 40 and now we could take a look here is the before and here is the after so now we have our background adjusted and it already looks really good now we're going to work on the elephants 
or you might like to say the pachyderms. Don't you love these two little elephants here? And now we've got our color grading tool in the way, so click X, nothing will change here. Let's go back to my channels. We can click on elephants, click on our mask calculator, click X to intersect, X out of the elephant selection, click on the luminosity mask button, click on midtones three to protect shadows and highlights from clipping, click equal to make that calculation, and now the elephants are selected. I'll put it to a color grading tool, and now let's do some adjustments. I'll start out with the shadow, so I'll click on the black circle, and I've moved mine to a minus 14 right there. And now let's go to midtones, click on the gray circle, and this one I just went up to like a plus 10 right there. And now for the highlights, white circle, I took that one up to 39, plus 39, which is right here. Now here's the before and here's the after. Okay, so I really like it. And then I did a slight bit of color grading on the midtones. So let's click on the midtone block. Now I love this new color grading tool because I like to say it has pinpoint accuracy because all you do is point your cursor to where you want the color grade at and then give it a left click with your mouse. So you can change it to any color grade that you want, which is pretty cool. But if you look at my notes, there's a number here so I'm gonna double click this to select that and I'll type in my number. And that was 7A7886 and click this button right here and there's the color grade. So if you wanna get my same color grade, just type in that number or play around and find the one you want. And basically I'm just trying to offset the warm tones just a little bit. I don't wanna to go too blue here, but I'm just going slightly blue. Here's the before and here's the after. Now let's check out the overall before and after. Now remember this is called layer zero, not background. Before it had to be called background or it wouldn't work. Now if I click my before after action, here's the before and here's the after. So it now works. And don't forget to delete that before after action, the original one before you go ahead and install the new one or at least rename it. Now, after that balance and contrast, I like to study the image and see what it needs. And what I think it needs next is to darken down the shadows just to add a little bit more contrast in the image, but just in the background. So what we'll do is X out of the color grading tool. And again, nothing changes here. Go to my channels, click on background, click on the mask calculator, click X to intersect, X out of the background selection, click on the luminosity mask button. Now I'm looking for dark tones. And we can start out, now these are all your light tones to the right, like lights one, two, three, four, five, and six. But I'm gonna start with darks one, then I go to darks two, and I'm looking for those really dark tones, darks three, darks four, here's darks five, not that dark, darks four, that's the one I want. And now we can click equal to make that calculation. And now the elephants drop out, because I don't wanna darken them. And now we need to output this. I'm gonna output this to a curves adjustment layer and simply put it in the multiply blend mode. We can click this button right here. And now it's in the multiply blend mode and check it out. Here's before and here's after. So we've darkened up the shadows in the background. Pretty cool. The whole goal of these TK Friday videos is to demystify the TK plugin for Photoshop and for you to see its power. When you watch me do these full edits, I use all different types of methods and techniques and just watch the videos and you'll pick up new things each and every week. Some weeks will be similar things, but every now and then something new will be in there. But the more you get familiar with it, the easier it gets and the more powerful and creative your editing can become. Every now and then I'll get a comment saying, Dave, which uh, video should I watch to start out working with the TK plugin for Photoshop? I've never used it before. And I say, watch any full edit video. You're going to pick up a lot. Each video, you're going to learn more and more because every image is different and they all require their own set of various adjustments. And not to mention the PDF notes you get with every edit. So you can save those and, and you can go back and reference them anytime you want. And now studying the image again, I see areas back here that are light, especially around all the edges and certain places up in here. And I'm gonna do something a little bit different here. This will not require a mask. And I wanna darken those areas down. So here's what we'll do. Grab a curves adjustment layer. We're gonna put a black mask on it. So click this button on the combo panel or CX panel. And then we want to change this to the multiply blend mode. The multiply blend mode is so cool because it darkens things. What I'm going to do is at 30% opacity, 
on your brush, a very soft 0% hardness brush. I'm just going to click with my mouse over these areas that I want to darken with that nice feathered brush. Okay, so I'm going to click here once. See how that darkens? I'll click here again. And it's just a matter of clicking. You know, I'll click this again. I'll click down here. And I'll click here and here. I might click this a little bit. It's kind of like vignetting it somewhat. And if it goes up into the elephants a little bit, that's okay because it's feathered so nicely. It's going to look really great. And I'm just clicking. Do you see that? It's fun to click. Click away, have some fun, enjoy yourselves. And up in here, I'll click here a couple times, maybe three times. Up over here, over in here, around the elephant here. And maybe here one more time, and maybe up here and here. Again, just check it out and take your time and study it. But check this out. Here's the before and here's the after. Now let's take a look at the mask. See this double arrow button here? Now, I like to think of the uh, TK plugin for Photoshop as my control center i feel like a jet pilot on a plane i have all this information and it makes working with photoshop so much easier okay if i click this we can see that's what my mouse looks like but you see the nice feathered edges on there and now click this button again we can see the image again so here's the before and here is the after and if you felt you're too strong all you need to do is i like to hover over opacity and you know just pull this off and then just build it up slowly and then stop wherever you like it. But I like it at 100%, I think it's okay. But again, I'm trying to balance out this image, and I think so far we're looking pretty good. Let's do an overall before, so I'll use my before after action. Here's overall before and after. Okay, so next I'm thinking, I'd like to bring a little texture out in the elephants, mainly the big elephant right here. And I think soft pop, it'll pop the color a little bit, it'll pop the texture. Let's grab a TK action. You can click the TK action button here. In my case, my actions are open, so I'm looking for soft pop, and soft pop is a really good action. I use it a lot. Click on soft pop, and now we can see there's a soft pop. Now it's over the entire image, and it's way too strong, but let's go right up here. This is layer mask mode. Now if you hold your option or alt key down, if you have your tooltip shut off, if you hold the option or alt key down, you can hover over buttons and see what they are. And you can see what this button does. It brings us into layer mask mode. Let's check it out. So click on the button and now we're in layer mask mode. Now the beautiful thing here is you could sample all kind of masks on this layer here. And basically what I want to do is tone down the effect. So we could try like what's a lights one mask look like. So I'll click this and you can see there's a lights one mask right there. Okay. And what's a darks one look like? Well, it looks like that. I think a mid-tones mask will work. And these mid-tones, one, two, and three are all mid-tones, but they get lighter as they go to the right. So if I click on mid-tones one, we won't see much of an effect. And you can see it's really dark gray, right? And now when we go to mid-tones two, and here's mid-tones three, and see how light that is? But check this out. Here is the before, and here is the after. So I got some texture on the elephant, and it brings up the saturation a little bit. Again, here's the before and here's the after. Now, if you want to see what the effect's like without this mask, click this X, and you can see that's what it looks like without the mask, and this is what it looks like with. So you see how it just tones it down. That's without the mask, and this is with. So it really helps a bunch. But also, the image has gotten a little bit darker due to the soft pop, but I can fix that really simply and this is what i love to do let's x out of the layer mask mode by clicking this x let's click on the luminosity mask button let's go to a mid-tones one and as you can see it's a darker mask here's what a mid-tones two looks like so it gets lighter but it's still a mid-tone and here's mid-tones three but i want a very subtle lightening of the mid-tones mid-tones one is what i use most often sometimes mid-tones two but mainly mid-tones one I'll, I'll put that to a curves adjustment layer and use one of my favorite blend modes, and that is screen to lighten. Click on screen, and the midtones are lightened. Here's the before, and now here is the after. So the darkening that we got from the soft pop, we were able to counteract that with this adjustment here, lightening up the midtones. And by the way, here's another way we could have done that. Let me go ahead and delete this layer. This layer is active. I'll click on the trash can on the combo panel. What I could have done was went with the curves adjustment layer, put a black mask on it, and clicked on screen blend mode. And then I could have went to layer mask mode and simply clicked on midtones one, 
you can see the lightning. And if you want more lightning, go to Midtones 2. See how much lighter it gets, and here's Midtones 3. And if I click on, well, let's go back to Midtones 2. And if you click the X, you can see what it looks like without that. You can see it's really bright, right? But with that Midtones 2, it looks like this. I'll click the X again. And you know what? I might like it a little bit lighter. Here's the before and here's the after. So that little extra lightness is kind of nice. And if you want to, if it's too strong, again, pull it off and then just build it up slowly. So that's another way to fine tune an adjustment. Just use the opacity. Let's go to like 80%. Here's the before and here's the after. So that's a little bit lighter. On second thought, I think it's a little too light, but here's another tip for you. If you're using a tool that if you use your shortcuts of numbers, like the brush tool, if I click one, it'll go to 10%. So if I go to a tool like the zoom tool, and you can get to the zoom tool by typing Z, then you can just type the numbers. Okay, so right now I'm at 80%. I can type my seven key. That's 70%. The six key, there's 60%. Let's see, 60%. Here's the before and here's the after. I think I like 60% better. So that's a little tip. Now, remember, it can't be a tool that utilizes the shortcut key of numbers. It has to be a tool that doesn't, like the Zoom tool is a good one to go for. And just type Z and then type on your numbers. And if you want an opacity of, say, 55%, you can type your five key real fast, like 5-5. Five, five. And now we're at 55%. But I want 60, so I'll type my 6 key. Now let's get out of layer mask mode. I'll just click this X. And what's next? Yeah, what is next? How about a freehand vignette? Grab your lasso tool. Type L to get your lasso tool. And what I want to do is just draw a vignette around here like this. Like come up into here, come around here, over in here, and up like that. Now you're gonna find freehand vignette right here in your actions. Of course, you may have to click TK to open up your actions, but you're gonna find it right under vignette. Click freehand vignette. And I usually take this radius just the way it is and click okay. And check it out. Here's the before and here's the after. So that gives me even more balance. But that's a little bit too strong. Now I have the lasso tool and it does not use a shortcut for the number key. So let me type four, that's 40%. Let me type three, that's 30%. I think I'm gonna go with four, 40%. So before and after. All right, let's move on. We're nearing the end of this edit and near the end, I like to try the color luminosity action, which you're gonna find right here. So I'm gonna click on that. And this is a cool action. It's a um, black and white adjustment layer in the luminosity blend mode. It only affects the luminosity values of the colors. But Tony has programmed this to make it not change. You notice when I show you before and after, you don't see a change in the image. But all I want to do is tweak the reds, yellows, and greens, because that's basically what's in this image. And I'm going to take my reds to the left, and I'm going to come to like right here at 12 and let's go with yellows now we can lighten the yellows or darken the yellows right now they're at 89 you know i can lighten them up but i'm going to bring them down a little bit and i'm going to go to like i went to like 63 and now the greens right now the greens are 59 i want to darken them i'm going to take this down to the left and i'm going to come down to like 32 right there and the reason i know that because i made the edit the other day and i'm looking at my own notes i'm cheating not really because i originally made the edit let's see a before and after so here's the before i'm just clicking on the eye of this layer there's the before and there's the after so really nice but now it's a little darker so now i want to lighten up the midtones and i'll do it that other way i just showed you earlier so i'm going to click on the curves adjustment layer black mask screen blend mode and then we'll go into layer mask mode and let's try midtones one, which is the one I generally like. There's midtones one, here's midtones two, here's midtones three. Isn't this cool? Because you could sample these all out. And I went back to midtones one. Here's the before and here's the after. And I like it at 100%. Let's check out the overall before and after and see how far we've come. Here's before. Started out like this and now we look like this. I'm really happy. It seems a little bit oversaturated in green. So I'm going to show you another really cool mask. And I've showed this in the past, but I'll do something a little different this time. And that's the uh, 
saturation vibrance masks. So let me X out of layer mask mode and click on the saturation vibrance mask button. Saturation one is showing us in the lighter areas, the colors that are mostly saturated. Now I wanna tone those mostly saturated colors down. And one thing I wanna say, this is a very good final adjustment and this helps you to adjust your saturation to taste. Sometimes we wanna bring up weaker colors. In this case, I wanna bring down stronger colors. And it's to taste, you know, cause sometimes I'll get somebody saying in a comment, wow, man, that was really oversaturated. Well, you know what? That's my taste. You have your taste. I feel my job is to help you to be able to utilize the tool to make it easy for you to bring out your artistic vision for your images. Right now, you can see that these grays are not very light, so I won't get that strong of an effect at this point. So there's something we can do, though. And don't forget, we can modify any mask. I'm gonna use a levels adjustment, click on the levels adjustment, and all I'll do is take this mid-tone and I'll start to bump this to the left and I can lighten up these grays. Watch this. I'm going to move this to the left. See how they're lightening up? And I'm going to take it over to right about here. And remember, these are the mostly saturated colors of the image, which even includes more than greens, green yellows, and some of the oranges or whatever's in the elephant. And now I'll, I'll put that to a hue saturation adjustment layer. And just with master... You know, I can take the saturation and just start to pull this back. You see that? And it's only targeting the strongest saturated colors or the mostly saturated colors. If I take this the whole way off, you can see I don't lose all the color. So just adjust it to the point where you think it looks right for your vision. Again, it's your vision, not my vision. I'm just showing you how to work these tools, okay? So there you go, right there. So here is the before and here's the after. So... I've effectively toned down the oversaturated colors. And that is basically it. Let's check the before after one more time. Here's the before and here is the after. Don't forget to download the newly updated before after action from Tony and give him a thanks to in the comment. Maybe say, hey, thanks, Tony. Don't we appreciate Tony? I know I do. I love Tony. He's such a great guy. Well, sad to say, but another TK Friday comes to a close. Thank you all for joining me today on this TK Friday full edit. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Cully, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing!